Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, I'm going to turn down the mic just to say good morning. I'm going to turn down the music just to say good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Marie. Good morning. So friends, good morning again and welcome back. Happy Monday. We're going to get started in a few minutes just to give everybody some time to re-enter. Hi Colin. Good morning. Um, while we're waiting for everybody to join us so we can get started this morning, go ahead and let us know where you're joining us from, right? And you can feel free just like we did last week, right, to leave a comment in the comment box. Hi Vinny. Hi Annalisa, good morning. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us. So if you're just popping in now, good morning again. Happy Monday, happy start of the week. We hope you're doing well. We're going to get started in a few minutes. But like I said, before we get started, go ahead and let us know where you're joining us from. Okay, and while we're waiting, Thank you, Nicole from Easton, PA. Hello. Hi, Liam from New Jersey. Welcome. Oh, hi, Meredith. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Diego. Welcome back, you guys. We miss you. Hi, Elias. Hi, Julie. All right, friends. So I'm going to turn back the music back up just so while we're waiting. Okay. But keep on letting us know where you're joining us from. Hi, Jack. Colin's brother. Hi. Hello. All right, so good morning, everyone. Here goes the music again, just to give us a few more minutes before we officially get started. get started in another minute but thank you so much for letting us know where you're joining us from wherever you're joining us from whether it's New Jersey New York or further away welcome 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 we're gonna get started in another minute to get started with our program today okay so thank you so much for joining us hi Sarah hi Amelia good morning hi Karen alrighty everybody so let's get started. Hello. Hi, Maricela. Hi, everybody. Okay. So friends, I'm going to change the screen and just talk us through how we're going to do our program today. So let's get started. Okay. Hello. Welcome back. It's great to see everybody or connect with everybody, right? I hope you're doing well and having a happy Monday from home. If this is your first time joining us here live on Facebook, my name is Mr. Kengo. Okay. And I, I'm part of one of the educators that works at Liberty Science Center. My role there is the Associate Director for Early Childhood Education Program. So my job is to help work with and engage our preschool to second grade audiences. So if you're within that grade level, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here live on Facebook. Um, if you're older, welcome too. Okay, everybody's welcome. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a program together, right? So I'll be talking with you how to do that experiment um, with the materials we have from home, right? What you might see me doing is looking over here. That's just because I have on this side I f our Facebook stream so I can see your comments as they're coming in. 
you might see some replies from my friend Mr. Jeremy who's also connected here today so as long as you let us know leave a comment in the comment box if you have a question or you have a thought about what we're talking about please feel free to do so we'd love to hear your thoughts and what you're thinking okay all right so let's get started with our program today our program is called flower power so today we're going to be talking all about flowers which is awesome right because mother's day is coming up right now if you were able to tune in for our program last week we had something i called a driving question so if you've never heard that before or this is your very first time joining us right let's talk a little bit about what a driving question is okay a driving question is a question, a big question we want to see if we can answer by the end of our program together. Okay, and if you don't know the answer, that's okay. Right, that's why we're here today. That's why we're here together, to learn something together. Okay, but that's what a driving question is. So where I like to start with our driving questions is thinking about what we already know about that question. All right, so let's get our minds ready and our driving question is right over here on the left side of your screen okay our driving question is how do flowers spread the water they need to grow and survive All right I'll say that one more time how do flowers spread the water they need to grow and survive so like you've been doing so far this morning so well go ahead and leave your answer to today's driving question what we already know about it right leave a comment in the comment box so that we can see it right and like I said you might see Mr. Kangle look over here that's just because I'm trying to see the comments that are coming in now because there's lots of friends joining us from all over the place I may not see your comment and I apologize for that friends but uh, please feel free to leave us a comment right and I will do my very best to um, see it and let you know that I see it right and answer if you have a question okay so let's take a look so again try and le let us know right what your answer is to today's driving question so I'm gonna pop it up on this side of our screen let's take a look oh yeah so Chrissy says uh, with their roots yeah so flowers definitely have roots that's what we're gonna be talking a lot about today so great job let's see what else veins I see some friends saying veins Camden says the roots send it to the flower nice job Camden Sophia says roots excellent friends so it sounds like we already know a whole lot about flowers which is perfect okay and if you were gonna say that runs and if you were gonna type in roots or the roots bring the water up through the flower right and you wanted to share that that's okay scientists often have the same exact thought right and it's still really meaningful to still share it out right as a community with our community so go ahead if you were gonna say roots you can still type it in right and let us know that you had that same thought okay all right cool so let's see hi oh, Adam says with their stem right stem I see lots of things Thea says using their roots Anna says using their roots nice job perfect whoa Rocco capillary action Rocco nice job Rocco Rocco my friend it's great to see that you're part of it a lot of our friends from homeschool day perfect so Rocco nice job you are definitely in Mr. Kango's brain because that's exactly where we're going <laughs> awesome Isabel says flowers need water and sunlight and you know what friends Isabel that's a great thought and that's where we're gonna start right now Okay, so friends, keep typing in your answer. Leave a comment if you have an answer to our driving question. But for time purposes, I'm just going to keep going. Okay, friends? Because Isabel brought up a good point about talking about what we already know about flowers. So let's take a look at that. So some of us, what we already know about flowers, right, friends, is that they need sunlight to grow. Right? A lot of us said that already. Right? and shared that in the comment box they also need water to help them grow and they, they smell great right I love flowers I'm sure you love flowers too right and they do smell great but what we're gonna focus on a lot today is how the flower takes the water that it has from the ground and spreads it throughout its entire body all of its different parts 
right? And some of our friends already said some great ideas about roots, okay? Now, to help me learn, sometimes I like to see things moving in action, right? And that's where we're going to look today, all right? So here's Mr. Kango's flower, right? And we're going to pretend that this flower is outside in the sun. And the first thing, if we were to plant it outside, it would start getting some sunlight, right? Now that sun would be beating down on our flower, right? But not all days are sunny days. Sometimes we have rainy days, right? And that rain is super important, right? This weekend, Mr. Kango saw a lot of rainy days, right? And rain's important because it helps feed our plants, right? And animals too. Now that rain goes down, right? And hits our flowers, but it also seeps into the soil. And just like our friend said, plants have special parts of their body, right, parts of themselves that help take in that water, and that is called the roots. Now, I like this little animation because it helps give us the idea that the roots are pulling in the water, but it doesn't necessarily show us what those roots look like, right? Now, if you've never seen roots, let's take a look at this image, and this is kind of what those roots would look like right? Now the roots, like we were saying, take in the water from deep into the soil and they pull it into that tree or plant or shrub or flowers, right? And it slowly brings the, that water up, up, up through that plant, feeding all the different parts of the plant, right? So you're exactly right, friends, if you said roots, perfect job, right? Now, there's a process that's happening, right? We said that water is being pulled up. Now, these, these processes have special names, okay? So let's talk about what those names are, okay? Now, those processes, there's two big ones that I want us to try and focus around today. And I'll talk about them. And you'll see the names on the screen so you can follow along at home. If you've never heard of those words before, that's okay. Right? That's what we're here to learn about today. All right? So the first is when water goes on these plants, right? And it's out in the sun. Sometimes that water gets evaporated. Have you ever heard of that word before? If you have heard that word before, go ahead and leave us a comment tell, telling us what you think evaporation is, right? So that water is getting evaporated, right? Go ahead and let us know. What is evaporation, right? And we're going to talk about what that process is called that involves water getting evaporated, right? So maybe we were outside and we see the water, right, is on the, so the ground and it's sitting in the sun. Evaporation is when that water starts to disappear, right? Now, when this water starts to disappear, right? New water gets pulled to replace it. This process is called transpiration, okay? So as water is getting evaporated, right, it's disappearing from our plant, new water gets pulled to its place, and that is called transpiration. But there's another big, big idea that I want us to try and focus on too that's also happening. And one of our friends did say it, Rocco said it in, in, towards the beginning, right? And if you were going to say that too, great job. Okay, the second process is called capillary action. Now, capillary action is the movement of that water. So as water is getting moved, just like we see on this animation here on the screen, right? Water is getting moved up the plant and to all the different parts, okay? That is called capillary action. So those are our two big ideas that help move the water throughout our plant. First, transpiration, which is when water gets evaporated. And because water gets evaporated, the plant says, oh, let's pull in new water to replace it. Okay? And the second is capillary action, which is the movement of water through the stem. Right? Okay, so those are our two big ideas. Now, what we're going to do, since we want to not only talk about science, but we want to try and do something to help us learn these big ideas, right? We're going to make a model again, just like we did last week, 
Okay. Now that model is going to involve a lot of materials, and those materials are right over here. Okay, so these are Mr. Kango's materials. And like we did last week, I'm going to walk you through how to create your model. Right? So if you haven't got your materials yet, go ahead and start gathering them together. Right? So you're going to need some markers, you're going to need a pair of scissors, a cup. Now you see Mr. Kango's cup on the screen is empty, but you're going to want to have some water ready. Okay? So you can either have that water separate, or you can have it already in your cup. So when we're ready to use it, you're ready to go. And you're going to want to have some kind of paper. So I like to use coffee filters, right? Because that helps me with our today, our project today. But like we mentioned right before, if you don't have coffee filters, you can use paper towel or newspaper. All right, friends. And this is what our model is going to look like by the very end. Now, this is Mr. Kango's model, and you don't have to make yours look like mine. You can color it however you want it to look like, right? This is your flower, right? So you can use lots of different colors, right? I use some of my favorite colors, pink and purple and red and blue, but you can use your own favorite colors, whichever colors you want. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute or so to gather those materials while I look over here at our comments to see if anyone has any questions, right? If you do have a question, please feel free to let us know, right? I might not have the answer, but I can certainly jot down your question and save your question, and we can reach back to you with the answer to your question a little later, okay? So let me take a look if anybody has any questions. Let's see. I see some friends are right. So Melissa says, and Aaron says, the water is getting sucked up through the air. Nice job. Right. I see some friends are posting some really good comments about what evaporation is, right? And that helps us understand transpiration. Oh, nice job to our friends talking about the water cycle, too. Yes. So I see Sumi saying, water is almost everywhere. Oh, I see Jen is saying this is fun. Thank you, Jen. Yes, so I see uh, Bavini is saying, can I get my supplies? Yeah, friends, please feel free to go get your supplies if you haven't had the chance to gather them already, right? So go ahead if you need some time to go gather them. In a moment, I'm going to get started. And if you miss any of the beginning friends of putting together our model, don't worry, just like our last um, program together last Monday, this is going to be recorded so you, that you can watch it later so you don't miss anything. Okay? Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so I see some friends are saying, can it work with a different kind of coffee filter paper? So sometimes you we might use a a uh, smaller coffee filter paper or coffee filter paper that is brown in color. It's, it, it should work okay. Um, you can certainly try it. I usually use this kind, so I'll show you which one I'm using. It looks like this, this white one, just because I've always used that. But you can certainly try it, friends. And if it doesn't work out on our first try, that's okay, right? We can always try it again later, okay? So I think we should get started. So I'm going to change my screen so you can see just me and that way I can walk you through the steps together. Okay. Now like last time, I'm going to do the steps on the table, but I will be sure to show you when I'm done with any particular step. Okay. So I'm going to change my screen. All right, you guys. So I think we're ready. I hope you're ready. Right. So what we're going to want to do first is we're going to want to gather the materials we're going to use for the parts of our flower, right? And like a model, a model is a representation of something, right? It might be smaller, it might be larger, but in this case, we're going to use the coffee filter paper or your paper towel or newspaper as a representation of a flower, okay? 
So we were saying that you might need four to five coffee filter papers. And that's because we're going to use the coffee filter both for the petals of our flower as well as the stem of our flower. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to separate the coffee filter paper you have in half. Okay. And that way we know which ones we're going to use for the petals and which ones we're going to use for the stem. Now if you're using newspaper or paper towel, you're going to want to try and do the same thing, right? We're going to want to try and have an equal size, something similar to a little bit larger than your, paper, your cup. So here's Mr. Kingo's cup that I'm going to use. And you want to try and make sure that your surface for your petals is larger. Because that way when you're all done cutting, it's going to be able to rest inside your cup. So it's going to want to try and look a little bit like this, right? It wants to be big enough so it can rest inside on top, okay? So I pulled out about three coffee filter papers, right? Because I gathered five. Now what I want to try and do first is just lay it flat on the table. So I want to make a nice big circle, nice and flat. So I'm using my hands and I'm just pressing it down. Okay, almost looks like a pizza. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to color it. So we get all that fun stuff. Okay, so you can use your markers, you can use whichever markers you want. The one thing I would recommend trying to do, friends, is use water, uh, water soluble markers. But if you don't have the water soluble markers, you can try whichever markers you have with you and you can choose your favorite colors and just create the design that you really like, right? Now, when I like to do my flower models, I like to do patterns. So if our friends in the room are joining us from home are working on patterns, this is a great way to practice it, right? And a pattern is something that repeats itself. Okay, so now we're not only learning about science, but we're also doing a little bit of math, right? So I'm going to make my pattern, I'm going to do some lines, and like we said before, friends, I'm making Mr. Kango's flower, but I think your mommies and daddies and your family would like to see your flower, so you can make your design whichever way you want it to look, right? You don't have to copy mine. I'm sure yours will look great just the way it is. Okay, so I made some lines to start. So here's the start of mine. And now I'm gonna make some, maybe some shapes. So I'm gonna make a squiggly line. I'm making some squiggly lines in between both. There's the next part of my flower. Okay, perfect. And now I'm going to add one more thing, and I'm going to use a different color. Maybe I will use some orange. I like orange too. And I think I'm going to make some circles. So if you're following along from home, this is a great time to try and make your designs on your flower. And then when we're all done, we're going to cut it together. Okay, but for right now, if you're just joining us in, we're decorating our petals. We made it nice and flat, right? And we're going to take another moment or so just to make our designs. Okay. I'm making all my circles. Now my pattern's super, super complex, right? It's not a two-part pattern. It's probably like a four-part pattern. Okay. I'm going to cap all my markers so my markers don't get dry because I'm going to want to use them again for another experiment, right? And just like we did last week, now that we're done with our markers, right, because we are done with our markers, we can push those things aside or place them aside because we won't need them. That way they're out of our way while we're trying to do our other parts of our experiment. So here's Mr. Kango's design, right? and I made my different parts of my pattern and now I'm ready for cutting, okay? So I'm gonna place all my markers aside so I don't lose any of them and now it's time for my scissor. 
so if you are working with an adult make sure right we're being safe with our scissors friends right because science and safety go hand in hand we definitely want to be safe when we're doing our science together okay so when you're going to want to cut the first thing we're going to want to do is fold the top part of our our coffee filter paper down towards the bottom so we're going to want to fold it in half almost like to make it look like a taco okay so let me show you what that looks like so I'm going to fold it in half and my friends if you were joining us last week we got some great practice for this portion right and I made a little crease and I'm just going to press it nice and flat and let's see yeah it kind of does look like a taco and here's Mr. Kango's example right so I just took my flour and I'll show you again from here right we have it like this to start and now we're just gonna fold it in half okay and press that crease nice and tight so that we have half of it now to next part of our experiment we're gonna wanna fold it in half again now what that means friends and I want you to look really closely to see what Mr. Kingo means by folding in half right we're not gonna fold it in half this way right we're gonna fold it in half this way so this side or this side is gonna go to the other okay so let's take a look on the screen right and I'll show you right so this side is gonna go here so I'm gonna take my fingers and I'll go like this almost like closing a book right and you notice now it's almost like a fan okay so I'll show you again so here's Mr. Kango's right and this side is gonna go over here to make it nice and small so I'm gonna close it just like this okay there we go now Friends, guess what? We're going to make one more and we're going to fold it in half again. I know. It's a lot of folding. But this way, when we cut our bottom piece, it's the right size, right? Because if it's too big, it won't work as well. So we want to try and make a, as many folds as we can, not too many, but just a number of folds so that we can make the, the bottom of our model the right size okay so here's our next piece right and we're gonna fold it this side to this side okay and it's gonna go like this and now it looks like an ice cream cone okay so yours looking at Mr. Kango's right yours should look sort of like mine sort of like an ice cream cone okay and this way now we're gonna take our scissor and we're gonna cut a small piece right from the bottom now a small piece is better friends it's better to start small right because we can always go bigger if we need to but if we make it too big we can't go back and make it smaller but if we make a mistake that's okay right but make sure when we start yours looks like mine kinda like an ice cream cone alright so here are those steps again so here right the first step is to fold it in half from the top or the bottom to the other side so nice and small sort of like a taco right then we take our one side and fold it to the other so that's gonna go this way or that way right and fold along the crease right now it looks like a fan right and we're gonna take one side and fold it to the other folding it in half right this way so I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna fold it right and if you need to do this on a table that's okay too Mr. Kango's doing it in the air just to show you right what that fold process looks like and now here's my ice cream cone alright now we're gonna to wanna to cut from the bottom here not too much okay and not too little but just right sort of like the Goldilocks fairy tale so not too big not too small just right okay and I'm gonna take my scissor and I'm gonna start out small and it almost 
if you're wondering how big to cut, because I get that a question a lot from friends. So I take the piece I cut and I almost look at my pinky nail. And I see that it's a little bit smaller than my pinky nail. But for my friends at home, try and think about your pinky nail. So that means this part of my pinky, right? The whole thing, not this white part, but the whole thing, the pink part included. Okay, and try and make it about that size. Now here's the piece that I cut, right? And when I open it up, I have a nice place to put my stem through. And that's where we really want to start. Okay, so friends, if you are going to go ahead and cut yours, go ahead and do that now, being sure to be safe. Okay, and if you already cut it, great job. If you cut it and you made a mistake, that's okay, right? Because we can always try again later. If you need some time to gather your materials, don't worry, right? This recording is going to be up here on Facebook on our LSC page so you can watch it later, okay? But now it's time for the remaining parts of our coffee filter paper. So let me go grab those. And I'm all done, almost all done with my scissor. Now, with my other coffee filter paper or your newspaper or paper towel, what we're going to do here is we're going to roll it into a cylinder. Now a cylinder, what that means is I'm going to make it nice and flat and I'm gonna roll it so it's almost the shape of a straw. So I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm just gonna roll it, roll it, roll it. Right, and I'm looking for the shape of a straw, something nice and long like this, okay? Now this, the reason we want this shape is it's gonna act as our stem, right? So I'm gonna place it right through where I cut, made my cut, and here we go. Here's Mr. Kingo's flower. Okay. Now, hopefully yours looks like mine. And if yours doesn't look like mine, right? I mean, the pieces, right? That's okay, right? We can certainly try again later, right? But make sure to feel free to do whatever design you like. Okay, friends? Now, we're going to take our cup and we're going to get ready to place it inside but before you do that friends I like you to take a look at the screen because I want to show you some things to try and do before you put your cup your flower into your cup right because if you put water right inside your cup already the reaction is going to start happening so let's talk about what we're going to notice before we go on to the next part of our experiment okay so take a look and I'm going to show you what that experiment might look like. So first things friends is I want you to feel free this long piece that you have over here especially if you use coffee filter paper you don't need that whole big piece. So you can take your scissor and you can cut it right so it looks a little bit more like a flower. right? Now since we're talking about flowers I just thought it'd be really fun to share what my favorite flower is. So my favorite flower is up on the top of our screen right? And that's a cherry blossom. I love those flowers. Okay. Now when we put our flowers right inside, a reaction is going to start happening. Okay. Now since your water doesn't have any food coloring, it might be hard to see. Right. So what I did, friends, is I took a video about the, of the reaction you're going to see. Okay. So the reaction you're going to see is kind of kind of look like this. Now, the reason Mr. Kingo's color, water is colored is because I took some marker, I took some blue marker, and I just dipped it in the water, and I swirled it around, sort of like I'm swirling something, right, making some tea. And the reason is I wanted to make sure, friends, you can see it from home, the process happening. Now that process we're noticing on the screen, that's capillary action. That's the water being pulled through the stem, right, to go up to all the different parts of our flower, right? That's capillary action, I know, right? That's pretty cool, right? Now if you wanted to color your water from home using a marker, 
make sure just to ask them your mom or your dad or a family member that's near you just because after you use it, it might be hard to use that marker again we might use it all up and our mommies and daddies might want us to not use it that way so make sure you just ask okay so what we're gonna see as soon as we put it in is that water being pulled up right and it might not be able to see it super well just by with plain clear water right but you can use your eyes take a close look make those observations so you can see capillary action happening right in front of you so I don't have any water in mine but I'm just gonna put it inside right because this way you can see what it's gonna look like right our flower should be holding itself up and as we wait friends we're gonna notice something happen to the petals right because we said capillary action is water being pulled up through the stem and going to all the different parts so eventually the water is going to go to the petals that we colored, right? And what that result might look is very different depending on how we color our petals. So I made um, a picture, I took a picture of what mine looked like after I let the experiment sit for about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so let's take a close look at that. So here's mine. So you can see, friends, that that water spread all throughout the, the flower, right? Our flower model. And it spread those colors that I made on my, on my petals all throughout our coffee filter paper, right? And as we let it sit, that water is going to evaporate. So it's going to be nice and um, dry so we can touch it. Okay, but just be careful, right? Because that is water and we don't want to spill it. Okay, so friends, great job. If you're putting your model right inside the water now, you're going to want to let it sit for a few minutes and it'll, it's going to take some time. Okay? But that process, right, the water going up is called capillary action. Okay? And that's exactly how water spreads through a plant, right, through capillary action. So, friends, let's go back to our driving question. Okay, and make sure you're getting ready if you're setting up your experiment you can put it inside now and you can put it on a shelf so it doesn't spill or you can put it somewhere near a window right to help our coffee filter dry more easily right somewhere you want to see it and watch it for the rest of the day that's perfectly fine okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my screen so we can go back to our driving question today so let me do that Okay, here we are. So friends, our driving question that we introduced at the very beginning of our program is this, right? How do flowers spread the water they need to grow and survive? Okay, so I'll say that one more time. So how do flowers spread the water they need to grow and survive? So friends, just like we've been practicing, I'm going to look over here and I'd love for you to go ahead and leave a comment, friends. Let us know what your answer is, right? See if you can use those words we practiced before, right? If you remember them, if you're still, if you're not quite sure what those were, that's okay. In a moment, I'm going to show you them on the slides. But go ahead and just type it out. Leave us a comment so I can see what you're thinking, what you're feeling. And I'm going to look over here so I can see some of those comments coming in. All right, and just like I mentioned before, friends, if I don't, there might be a lot of comments. So if I don't see yours, feel free to still let us know what you're thinking, okay? So you can share it, and I'll see if I can notice it, okay? So let's take a look. Oh, yeah, so Nikki, perfect, capillary action. So perfect, I see Bhavani saying the stem, right? The water does go through the stem. Right, and it goes and pulls up to all the different parts of our flower, right, through capillary action. Oh, thanks, Bobby. I'm glad you're having fun. Thanks for saying this is cool. Yeah, so you can feel free to decorate your flower however you want. Okay. 
Oh, so you know what? I see Sumi's question about do scientists really use this model? Um, you know, so, some friends, some scientists use different models to represent their thinking, right? And so models might look different for all different kinds of scientists. So I like to use this one because it helps me understand how flowers take in water, but also how capillary action works. Okay? Oh, cool. So I see Chris said we use food coloring. Great. That definitely help us see capillary action more clearly. Cool. Oh, thanks, Samantha. I see you said the favorite flower is the sunflower. I like that one, too. I like how it follows the sun. Cool. Oh, nice job, friends. So I see a whole lot of capillary action coming in. Perfect. Yeah, so let's take a look, right? So flowers take in water and spread them throughout all their parts through capillary action. That pull, that movement of water, right? From the roots through the stem to the petals, right? And transpiration is also happening too, right? When water gets evaporated because water, our flowers are out in the sun. So the water inside of a flower gets evaporated right, or it disappears, and so new water gets pulled up to replace it, okay, so that's also occurring, okay, friends, so now that is the very end of our program, so friends, great job, I still see some comments coming in, coming through, so friends, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch the slide again, just to say thank you so much, as always, for joining us here on our Monday morning programs. I hope you had fun. I hope you love your model, right? If you made a mistake, that's okay, right? We can always try again another time. But if you're looking for more programs or content or experiments to try from home, similar to what we did today, feel free to check out our LSC in the house page right, for more experiments you can try from home. There's going to be the list of materials you need to do that experiment as well as the steps to go about it and follow that experiment and do it from home, okay? And that can all be found there. But what you can also find is more of our programming that's going to happen here on our Facebook page, right, from our planetarium staff to our friends M Mr. Alejandro and Miss Caroline who do our live from programming to learn all about some really cool stuff. So I'm going to take a look and if you have a question about today, feel free to leave a comment, friends. But for now, I thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week if you're thinking of going about with the rest of your day. Okay, so I'm going to take a look. But for now, thank you, friends, for joining us and have a wonderful rest of the day. Okay, so let's take a look and see if there's any question. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Claudine. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week, too. Oh, wonderful. Hi, Izzy. Hi, hi, Ellie. Hi, Dylan. Hi, friends. Oh, I miss you guys. I hope to see you guys again when you come back to the Science Center. So the, can we show the tree slide again? Sure, sure. So I'm going to go back. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So the tree slide is this one, friends. So we're talking about the tree, right? It has those different roots, and the water goes through those roots and goes up the stem, right, and goes throughout the different parts, OK? So there's that tree slide. For my friends that are watching from home and wanting to know more about the roots, right, and capillary action. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, thanks, Andrea. I love the cherry blossoms. I'm glad that you're they're your favorite, too. You're very welcome, Marilyn. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, friends. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Oh, bye, friends. Bye, Aaron. Thank you for joining us, friends. Thank you for coming to join us. Oh, bye, Rocco.
let's see. All right, my friends, so I don't see any questions, but feel free if you have questions, right, and you didn't get a chance to ask them during today's programming, I'm going to go back to our slide towards the end just so that you can see how you can get in touch with us, right? So if you have questions, please feel free to leave a comment and we will reach out to you, right? Or take a look at our LSC page for more experiments to try from home. But for now, friends, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you again for joining us, and I hope to see you all next Monday for our next experiment, okay? All right. Bye, friends.